Okay, hello and welcome back to this JavaScript tutorial series. Um, in this video we're basically going to carry on from where, where we left off again. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set the percentage that is shown here because at the moment we're just always showing 0% which is obviously not quite right. At the moment it should be about 25, well exactly 25. Um, so let's just go back to our uh, progress bar library file and we just need to add some code down here to set the percentage that is shown. So the advantage of the inner HTML method that I mentioned earlier is that you can just overwrite it. So you could, if you're using that method, just do text inner HTML. No, wait, I don't know. I don't use it very often. I think it's that. Doesn't really matter. Is it in capitals? Leave a comment. Is inner HTML with a capital HTML? Um, so you, if you were using this method, you could just do that equals to the same thing as above. So you could do percentage blah blah blah, um, not blah blah blah. That'd be weird. Do you, oops. <laughs> you could do that. Let me just bash my desk. That was pretty pro. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to use the inner HTML method, you could just do that. However, as I said, it's not the best way to do it. Um, unfortunately, the alternative does require you to sort of mess about a bit more. Um, what you actually have to do is remove the element, because this is this is an element just like a div. So what you need to do is remove that element and then add a new one. But the way to remove the element is pretty simple. You can just do text dot remove child not remote remote remove child and then you can get the first child because we know there's only one element inside this text div because we only added one with the append child method. So we can just get the first element by using text first child and then passing that straight into this, uh, sorry, to text remove child. And that will remove the text or remove the percentage. So if we go back to our browser now and just test this out, if I click 25%, you can see that the 0% disappears. So all we need to do now is add the code to add the new percentage, which we can do just by literally copying this down. So we're removing the elements and then adding a new text element. Well, obviously the percentage should be the percentage they enter, like so. Um, I'm just going to change these quotes because I did the wrong one and it's bothering me. There we go. <laughs> right, so now we should be able to test this out for the final time. Make sure I've saved it. So now if we click 25%, it says 25%. And now we just need to code the buttons for 50 and 75, and then the more interesting one, which is this sort of animated one. So let's go back to our main.js because we're actually done with our progress bar library file now. So let's go back to main.js and we'll just copy this down twice and change the percentages because that's how we defined our names essentially. Because um, remember we had set 25, 50 and 75. So all we can do is change the 75, oops, just delete the whole line. Set that to 50, set that to 50 set this down here to 75 and 75. Now um, you remember earlier I mentioned that we could do something a bit more clever. Um, one thing you could do is instead of having three separate functions for the three separate buttons you could have one function and you could like well actually one nice one way to do it would be to pass in um, an argument or something um, or maybe to use the value you could process the value just to get out the percentage um, and that'd be a little bit neater than having three separate methods um, however, I'm just not going to do that in here because that's not the focus of this video. Um, there you go, some some homework for you. Anyway, now that's that. Now that's done. We can test this out finally, and then we'll get on with the more interesting one. So we can click 25, set to 25. Click 50, sets to 50. 75, 75. Then we can click them all in fairly random order, and it sort of works. So now we're going to get on to the slightly more interesting one, which is the sort of animated 0 up to 100. So let's go back to our main.js and we will add a, another function for the onClick property uh, of the 0 to 100 button. So we're going to need to get the element first and we'll do this in the exact same way. So document get element uh, by ID. And the idea was from 0 to 100. So I missed out the 0. There we go. And the quote. Right, so now we've got that. We can use on click equals function. And then in here, 
we need to loop over all of the percentages, um, setting each one in turn. So there is a problem with this, obviously, but um, I'll demonstrate that first because there's quite a lot of video time left. So let's just set up a simple for loop. So for i equals zero, while i is less than or equal to, because we want, actually do want to set it to 100, while i is less than or equal to 100, increment or pre-increment or pre-increment i. And then we'll do bar set percentage. Uh, percentage. Is that right? Looks right. Then we'll just set it equal to i. So now we can test this, and I'll show you the problem. So 75 works. 25 works. If we click that one, it goes straight to 100. Just much quicker than you can actually see. So the problem is that the browser processes it, processes this way quicker than is actually visible. So we need to come up with a way to delay it. So the way we're going to do that is by using the window dot set interval function. So let's delete this silly too fast for loop. And what we're going to do is define a variable here called i. So i equals zero. And this is going to just be like a random count, well not a random counter, it's going to represent the percentage. So we set it to zero. And then down here we need to set another variable. Well actually, we need to use the set interval function from the window object. Window set interval. And what this function does is take a function as its first parameter here, and the second parameter is the number of milliseconds um, between calls to this function, if that makes any sense. So if we set this to, say, 50, every 50 milliseconds, the browser will call this function that we pass in. So we're going to pass in a sort of created inline anonymous function, is what they're probably called, I think. So what we want to do is set the percentage equal to i, so bar set percentage i, and then we want to add 1 to i, so we can increment i as we did in the for loop. However, this will just keep going up. We, we need a way to stop it when it gets to 100. Um, and the way we can do that, well, the way we can stop the interval function from actually being called every 50 milliseconds is well one way we could do it is we could just check here like if i is greater than or equal to no hang on if i is less than there you go uh yeah if i is less than 100 do these things like so however that's a pretty inefficient and daft way to do it because once the progress bar has got to the end the browser is still going to be looping over this and incrementing the variables and it'll still be calling this function every 50 milliseconds so that's a bit of a daft way to do it so we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is the opposite of that. So if i is greater than or equal to 100, we need to cancel the interval function, which you can do, but only if you've got the interval, which is what is returned by the set interval function. So we need to create a new variable here, interval, like so. And then down here, we can use the window clear interval function on the interval and that will just cancel whatever um, function is linked to this interval if that makes any sense um, and one more thing we can do is instead of having this on two separate lines we can have the i inside of here just like i plus plus like that and that will increment i and also use i on the same line just a little bit neater so there we go we should be ready to test this out so if we go back to our browser and hit refresh. Uh, just make sure 75 still works, just for the sake of it. And we'll click that. And you can see that it sort of animates its way up from 0 all the way up to 100. And then it stops. And we can click it again, and it'll do the same thing again. OK, so that's the end of this tutorial. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, more hopefully, you found it useful. And as always, thank you for watching.